Thank you. Okay, so today we're going to see a uh, new problem with reference frames that have no uh, not shared origin. It's uh, I think it's example 2.9 in your book, but I'll change it a little bit just for fun, uh, make it more entertaining. But before we start, I want to put this in writing because I got a question last time. This is what we are doing these days, kinematics, right? In kinematics, you can express your final results using different basis. You can't do that. I know we're going to use the idea that vectors have to be expressed in the same basis, otherwise it's, it's uh, you're doing something criminal, but you're not. Um, in dynamics, you're forced, in kinetics, uh, you will be forced, we will be forced to actually use the same basis, otherwise things will make no sense. But if I give you a velocity, say velocity of a point P, uh, can't remember what we derived last time with the problem. I'm just making this up. I say the velocity is theta one dot L big E one uh, plus I don't know, theta two dot. Say this is L one, this is L two, something like this, right? Little E one, and the basis big E one, two and three is fixed in a reference frame A. The basis little E one, two and three is fixed in another reference frame B. This is fine. If I'm not asking you anything else, this is your final velocity. I don't care that these are different bases. Is this a vector? That's a vector. Is this a vector? That's a vector. Can I add two vectors? Yes, I can. This is perfectly fine. Then, a different story if, is if you, uh, as we've seen, you're computing something like the angular velocity of a frame with respect to another, and uh, you have to, is there a question? Yes. Yeah, sure. Oh yeah, I don't know what this is. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, it's a product here. Okay. So uh, different story is if you actually have to do some oper makes you know go through some operations where it makes it easier for you to uh, have the same basis, cross products, etc. So, so that in that case maybe it's a good idea to have same basis. But if this is where you stop, uh, your, this this is what, this was your final goal and you express it this way with mixed basis, I'm fine with that. Don't make your life harder than it should be. These are two vectors, you can add them together. They are probably a vector point in this way and another vector point in that way. You can add them together, why not? But this was your final point, yeah, stop there. Don't, don't uh, do things that you're not asked to, uh, to do. Does it make sense? And in fact, uh, I think we had a case where uh, we had to go through a cross product of two vectors that were belonging to different bases, but it was pretty obvious what it was, and, and one of you just came up and said, but yeah, I can see what that cross product is. But, you know, to avoid mistakes when you do those operations, maybe it's good to express everything in the same basis, but that's the only case, until we get to kinetics. I just wanted to put it in writing, because I don't want people to waste time and do all sorts of crazy operations that they really don't have to do in kinematics at least. Before we do this problem, do we have any questions? You're looking at the problems on your book? I, ho I hope at this point. Okay, so this is a little complicated to draw. I'll do my best. Uh, let's go down like this. Give me a minute to do this. Okay, so we have this shaft here that actually continues with the with the arm that goes this way. Okay, Let's see what we call these things here. And at the end of this shaft, what you have in your book is you have a disc. Okay, this is called C, this is called B, 
this point here is called O. Center of this disk, we call it Q. Uh, let me see, this distance here is L. And I'm going to change the disk to, uh, I don't know how to even draw this. I wanted to draw like a, a fan, something that has blades, maybe. It, does, it doesn't really matter, but just to make it look like a real piece of equipment, maybe. So say that you have this fan here that is mounted on this arm. And uh, on one of the blades, we have a small insect walking in a straight line. OK? And uh, I'm going to call the position of this P, of this poor ant which is moving on the blade. That's a terrible drawing. I hope, I hope you can understand it. Let me know. I can try again, but I think this should do it. OK, so what's happening here is that the, uh, the shaft here, it's uh, given an angular velocity omega. You're given that as part of the problem. And then um, the angle of the fan is measured, the rotation of the fan about point Q is measured with an angle phi. What else do we need? I think that's it. And uh, we know that that point is moving. Well, let's, let's measure this distance here of P from Q with, uh, let's call this little, little r. OK, we want, what do we want? Velocity of Q, acceleration of Q, as seen by an observer fixed to the ground. And the ground is, as you can imagine, this is the ground here. It's whatever it's holding the shaft in place. And then I also want velocity of p as seen by an observer fixed to the ground and acceleration of p. OK. You help me do this. Now, of course, I start from scratch. How many rotations do I see? Two. So what's the next step? Reference frames, how many do I need? Three reference frames. OK, let's define these reference frames. Uh, one is obviously the ground. OK. What is the next one? Shaft OQ, so the uh, the entire assembly, right? This this is rigid. Everything is rigid. So let's call the uh, shaft arm assembly. Uh, let's call it A. Okay. And then the last one is the fan. Do we see these? I think this is. 3D, it's terrible. This is OQ, and the fan is mounted like this. It's perpendicular. It's not, I know in the picture it looks like that, but it's, it's, this fan is perpendicular to OQ. OK, so B is the fan. OK. What's next? This is what you have to do in your exam anyways. We have to do that every single time. Coordinate systems. So this is done. Let's start from the ground. What do you want to do? Yep. Origin at O. What 
Okay. I should have tried to do this in perspective a little bit, right? This is your shaft. This is your arm. The fan is, is rotating right here. And I'm drawing this, uh, the position where the, uh, the arm would be contained in the board, if you like. Right? So what do we want to do with the ground? Where do I pick my basis? How do I pick my basis? How I define the basis? Any ideas? This is this is like that the, the problem that the, that I set up last time, and I didn't. Dx along OQ. Would you say when omega equals zero or when omega? Well, yeah, I gave you the angular velocity. If you want, we can change this and call it an angle. Sure. Is that is that easier? Yeah, that that's that's fine. It doesn't really change anything. So let's call this theta if you like. Yep. Yeah, with an angle, it's easy to to say uh, what's going on. Yeah, but if I were to express that. Well, uh, a geometrical way to express that is, uh, what would that be? I guess you'd have to talk about it to You have to, yeah, you can, yeah. well, basically what, what happens is you define the ground as a, as a frozen position of this assembly. Sure. And then you, you can say a t equals zero. Yeah, no, you can say, it's, no, no, it's, it's fine to say, it's fine to say if I'm giving you omega, it's fine to say a t equals zero and you just have to tell me, Hey, this is the position at t equals zero. Just, yeah, right. just catch something. Uh, you, you decide when time starts really in these problems. So it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, let's let's do it with an angle. So, so we're consistent with the other problems we've seen. But t equals zero would work as well. So, e x along. What do we say? O q, right? When the angle theta is zero. Okay. You can continue. You tell me I write. So this would be E X. Like E Z out of A from that equals zero. Big E Z out of page. Yeah, same. When play like equals zero, right? In that particular configuration. And so then we have E Y. Does it work well? It doesn't really matter. Is it positive in the direction of theta? It doesn't have to be. I'm just asking. It's fine, right? Oh, the, 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 by the way, so when I chose EX and EZ this way, I, of course, implied that EY couldn't do anything else than this. Now, is EY this direction positive with theta? Looks like. If it wasn't, that's OK. You can do whatever you want as long as you choose coordinate systems that make sense and reference frames that have the origin fixed in the corresponding, uh, I'm sorry, coordinate system that have the origin fixed in the corresponding reference frame and the basis is also fixed there. Okay, so this is G. Uh, I believe that uh, B should be pretty simple. Oh, um, A, I'm sorry, A. We'll do it again. What do we pick? Yeah, makes sense. It's good to have same origin, same axis. Whenever you can share an origin or an axis, do it. Uh, it makes things much, much simpler. OK, origin at O. Uh, now, do we want to do like last time? The next one is little e's, and then the last one would be u's. I think that works pretty well. Uh, OK, so I guess little ex can be now along OQ, right? I need to be fixed in that T assembly along uh, OQ. Good. Nothing else needs needs to be said. Um, where is the rotation? It's about EY, right? So I definitely jump to EY and share the same axis with uh, with the other coordinate system. So little EY is big EY. What is this? Make sense? OK. And then if you allow me to go up here, and then I will have to erase a few things. 
The last one is B. So now we are attached to the, sh to the, to the spinning fan. Um, OK. Origin. That's a fixed point in the fan. Origin at Q, that's fine. What do you want to do? So I told you this, this uh, poor insect is moving on a straight line radially away from Q. The position is given by R. So I will probably do a UR along that, that line, right? What is it, QP? Make sense? Or U1, let's, let's call it U1. Let's just be consistent, it doesn't. We don't need to introduce symbols that we don't really need. But you can call it UR, U theta, U Z. Again, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's a right-handed orthonormal basis anyways. Uh, OK, I think it makes sense to have one axis uh, shared with the previous one. We always do that. So which one do I want to keep? Yep, EX. OK, so I want to call that U2. Does it matter? Doesn't. OK. We know what we want. P and Q, I don't need this. Let's waste a little bit of time, which is not wasted at all, drawing how these coordinate systems relate to each other. So let's go from this one to this one. They share which axis? The Y axis in the direction of rotation of the shaft. So I want to draw what happens in the other plane, which is where I see the difference. So I have EX here. What do I have? EZ. And then I have little EX, little EZ. And this is theta. OK. And then I go from A to B. They share U2 and, oh, I'm sorry about this. I wanted to be consistent, and I actually called them 1, 2, 3. Let's just do this. Make sense? OK, they share uh, EX. So what, uh, what plane should I put here to see the rotation phi? Actually, let me start from that one. Um, e y e z, right? Okay. And then what do I do with the other two? Do we agree? You can say no. So here I would have right. Is that right? Is this right? Is Leo EY sticking out? Doesn't look right to me. Right? That's going in. Remember, I'm looking, I'm looking, so if I look at this drawing here, I am up here, I'm looking down. That's what you have to keep in mind when you do these, draw these drawings that really help you. So 
in this other case, I have ex. Oh, this is coming out. And this is little ex, which is also ey. This one. Yep. Thank you. Did I make a mistake here? So you can use UY the same as little ex. But mm -hmm. UF and UI aren't always on top of it. If little ex is along OQ. Little ex is along OQ. OK. So this is the situation. So this is the situation. Uh, little ex is along OQ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my bad drawing. Yeah, as I said, this is the this is OQ. Gotcha. I gotcha. Go in the in the video. This is OQ. The disk is right here. So little e, uh, what is it? Little ex is coming out here, and so the uh, yeah they're always perpendicular. So this should be okay, right? Cross EX, we get it up. EX is this way, right? And we picked it this way. EY is out of, uh, EZ is, uh, uh, let's see. That's fine. It's going in, right? Right handed. So, so isn't EY pointed up? this is your EX, this is your EY, and this is your EZ, right? This is in general. So, if I'm looking at this plane here, yeah, it's coming. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the plane E X E Z, right? I am in this plane, but I am looking at it from this side. You see it in three D? Yeah. I'm actually here. So this is in general how you have in three D when you when you do a drawing of E X Y Z, right? So what I am drawing in this picture is the plane EX, EZ, but I am looking at it from here. So, so I, see, I see Y going in. So you're below? Oh, I guess, yeah, I'm, yeah. You're right, yeah, I'm below, yeah. I'm looking at it from below, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Good? No further questions? See, this is, the, the, this is the part that should take some time. Is there a question? Uh, no. no. No? Why not? I may be wrong. I, may, I can make mistakes. If you see a mistake, you should tell me. If you don't, we'll move on. OK, so now I want to compute the velocity of p and the velocity of q and the acceleration of p and q. Actually, that's the wrong order. I want to probably do q first and then p for what we've seen last time, because the velocity of p with respect to the ground would be the velocity of q with respect to the ground plus the velocity of p with respect to q as seen on the ground. And the same goes for the acceleration. a of p ground is a of q ground plus a of p with respect to q yep, uh, ground. I have to make sure I'm using the right, uh, right letters. Yes, q. q. So this will be the origin of your reference frame, which is rotating and translating with respect to the ground. OK, so we start with q. Velocity of Q with respect to the ground is what? At this point, we should really repeat the same song. What is the velocity of Q with respect to the ground? Oh, don't, don't give me, I'm not asking you for the final result. What is the velocity of a point with respect to a reference frame? D, D, T of R, Q. 
with respect to the ground. Now, how do I write RQ? What is an easy way to write RQ? In which, in which coordinate system fixed to which reference frame, it's probably a good idea. A, right? Yeah, I should probably mark them just to remember. So this was A, and this was B. OK. Now this is R of Q. The position of Q is L. What did I call that? Little ex? You keep track of this. I don't have a board big enough. <laughs> I, can, I can probably write it here. Correct me if I'm wrong. So big, the big E's are fixed in A, A and G. And then we have the little E's. in A, and then we have the U's in B, just to remember. So that's L uh, little e x. I really don't want to draw more stuff in that, that picture. That's uh, messy just enough. Hmm? The, the uh, EY and the U. Oh, so there was something going on. Tell me, what is the problem? OK, so little ex is here, right? Yeah. OK, so where is, the, where is the problem here? So EY is coming out of the page. And then EY is that way, so EZ is going upwards. That's correct. OK, so these are right. The little e's are right. OK, yeah, OK. Say that again. OK, this is right. That's correct. I define that, so yeah. OK. OK. If you're going UX, UY, UZ. That's right. Well, let's, let's do the same. I mean. No problem. You have e x e y easy, right? So I always I always do this, and I and I think about where I'm looking at uh, this picture from. So I'm looking from positive u y, at least the way I've been drawing this. So if I look from positive u y, I'm sitting here, and I see u x u y u u z in this case, right? And I should be see them, yeah, the other way. This way, right? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So if I wanted it to have to have it the other way, I should have picked this as minus ui. OK, that's fine. Wait, didn't you define it as ui plus ux? If you do that cross, you get it up, not down. Shall we do it again? I'm not defining negative or positive. I'm just defining back. So you had, okay, let's let's do it again. Let's do it again. That's fine. I said ux along. What did I say? Qp. Do we agree? Then I said the ui. I wanted this to be little ex. So these I I give these to you, and then if I. I want to follow my rule here. Uz will be ux cross uy. Correct? Cross uy. Right handed. So ux. This is ux. 
if I'm if I want to keep this UI sticking out, UX cross with UI. Yeah, it's coming down. Made a mistake before. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Don't need this anymore. So where were we? Uh, position of Q is L little ex, uh, which is a uh, basis fixed in A. So I'll probably use the transport theorem between G and A, D, D, T in A of R of Q plus omega A, G cross with R, Q. Let's, let's try to do this. Well, one step, maybe. What is this? Zero. Zero plus. What is omega A with respect to G? Theta dot. Theta dot. Big E Y, right? Big. Uh, did we use that as E Y? I'm sorry. Yeah, bigger. Well, which one? Which one do you think I should write? Yeah. Since that component, uh, that the other piece of the equation uh, is already in that basis, that makes it easier. Okay. And since, as you've seen, I make mistakes. I do make mistakes. And if I try to skip steps, it gets worse. Okay. E y cross with e x minus e z minus L theta dot little e z. OK, that's V of Q. Just leave it there. In G. Acceleration of Q in G. D dt in G of V Q with respect to G, right? But again, um, look at this vector is expressed in A, in the coordinate system fixed in A. So let's do the transport theorem again with the same reference frames involved. D, D, T in A of uh, the same vector, V, Q, G plus omega A, G cross with V, Q, G. Let's do it. What's the first one? Rate of change of this vector as seen by an observer fixed in A. The little easy doesn't change in A, but theta is changing, so, and that's a scalar. Plus, Omega doesn't change, it's what we wrote before. Uh, theta dot little ey cross with this minus L theta dot little ez. Okay? That is going to give me minus L theta double dot little ez. Ey cross with ez. Ey cross with ez is ex, so the minus doesn't go away. Minus L theta dot squared. What did I say? E y is e e x. See, when I get to this point, I tend to make less mistakes actually, because this is, this is just plugging in the vectors once I have the reference frame and coordinate system set up right, which I did in this case. That's why you need to focus more attention on that. Don't move on until you're convinced that they're they are working right. Uh, this should be it for Q. Yes. Not too bad. So all I need now to respond to this, so, so I, I've taken care of this. To compute the same for P, I just need to find the velocity of P with respect to Q as seen by an observer fixed to the ground and acceleration of P with respect to Q as seen by the ground. We'll start with the first one, V of P with respect to Q as seen by an observer fixed to the ground. What is this? Again, Definition d dt in g 
That's fine. I thought it was the five minute warning with a different music this time. Uh, that's what I need. DDT and G of RP with respect to Q. Now that RP with respect to Q, let's, let's write it here and then we'll erase it. It is just a matter of understanding when it's, where it's more convenient for me to write it. Uh, and that's probably uh, in the coordinate system fixed in B, right? It's this little vector here. Going from Q to P. So that's little r ux. Did I call that ux? I think so. Yes, along uh, QP. That's, that's how I defined it before uh, I confused them. So, OK. Well, then, which transport theorem do I want to use? Of course, the one between B and the ground. So D, dt in B of the same vector, of course, rp with respect to q plus omega b g cross with r p q. What is this? r dot ux plus, I need to figure out what this is. Uh, B ground cross with R P Q. How do we compute omega B with respect to the ground? I don't have that. It's not that obvious. What is it? <coughs> Bless you. So B with respect to the ground. Go through the frames. You start from B, you want to go to the ground. So it's omega B with respect to A plus omega A with respect to the ground. Addition property of angular velocity. Now this is the first we used it before, right? That was theta dot little EY, right? What is this one? This is phi dot. Which vector do I have there? Ex. Little ex? Do we agree? I don't have to do anything. They're already in the same basis. That's great. While I think last time we've seen. Uh, problems where they were not. We did the addition of these two, and they were not on the same basis. So you will have to transform one of the two vectors in the other basis, and you will start seeing some sines and cosines. That's, that's all it can happen. Uh, OK, so any problems? Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. Phi is, well, we said the x is actually coming this direction, right? So if I have defined that vector that way, yeah, there is a minus. Yeah, it's going against the direction of the little e x. Thank you. Yeah. OK. Good. So we just uh, plug it in here. Uh, OK, r dot u x plus that expression minus phi dot little e x cross with I erased it r p q was little e r u x well it looks like after all I have to do some transformations here so this is one of those cases where, well, I have a basis, little e x, little e y, fixed in A, and I have to do the cross product of this vector expressed in that basis with a vector which is expressed in another basis fixed in a different reference frame. So here I may want to maybe transform some of these unit, unit vectors. And it's probably easier if I do u x in little e, e y, and then do the cross product. Um, and again, I just do it here. I don't care about this. This can stay by itself as it is. I don't care. 
For now, I don't really care. They can be different bases. So what is UX? Um, to take a couple of minutes before we conclude to tell you a few things. So let's see. OK, that remains the same. Well, actually, let me just, let me just try to substitute here. What is little ux? Can you tell me? In, I want to project little ux in the basis little ex, little ey, little ez. That's the drawing I'm looking at, right? Sign phi EY, okay, keep going, plus, right, and let's see if I can fit in here. So I have R dot UX plus. Here's the nice sketch I have, theta dot. OK, let's, let's start with this. Lily y cross lily y, that goes away. Lily y cross with the z is ex. So I see a theta dot r sine of phi ex, right? And the first one is done. Then I see a e, an ex cross with the y. That's plus EZ, so the minus stays there. Minus phi dot R cosine of phi EZ. And then EX cross with EZ, minus EY. So the minus goes away this time. Plus phi dot R sine of phi, what is this, ex, e, ex cross ez, ey. So that's your velocity of p with respect to q as seen by an observer fixed to the ground. You add these, you can leave it as it is. You add these to your v of q and you get v of p. Can I erase this? Now, there is probably a, a small issue here, right? Because the next step is doing this. A of p with respect to q as seen by an observer fixed to the ground, an observer fixed to the ground, which is d dt in g of v p with respect to q in g. So that is what I have down here. This was V, P with respect to Q in G. So the line of thinking has always been, OK, I look at this vector that I have to derivate. And uh, I try to see in which reference, in which uh, coordinate system is expressed. And use that fact to apply the transport theorem. Now I see a mixed expression here. So this is another case where you may want to decide what to do. Uh, because if you want to use the transport theorem, you either go do between you do it between B and G or uh, A and G. You can do it both ways. I see there that the most of it is expressed in which reference frame? in uh, which coordinate system, fixed to which reference frame. In this one here, right? So I should probably do the transport theorem between those two. UX uh, is what it was before. So this, this is becoming pretty big now. We should rewrite that velocity before we move on. Five minutes, OK. I'll write it, and then you can finish it, because I want to tell you a couple more things. 
So that V P Q with respect to the ground is going to be equal to R dot. Now little u x becomes cosine of phi e y plus sine of phi e z plus all that stuff plus theta dot r sine of phi little e x minus phi dot r cosine of phi little e z plus let's put it here phi dot r sine of phi little e y did I miss anything? Doesn't look like. So what you want to do here is just collect together uh, all the terms and go here, apply the transport theorem between A and G. Do we agree? I have this vector which is expressed in a coordinate system which is fixed in A, so I do the transport theorem between A and G. You don't have to do it between B and G just because you are looking at something happening in B. In this case, it's more convenient to do it between, still between A and G. Now, the few things I wanted to tell you before we uh, conclude, and we can probably finish this next time. Um, okay, one is, at this point, before we move on with a um, few new topics, uh, usually people don't introduce all their angles at this point, but I really want to do it. We've, we've been seeing problems like this where there are rotations on two different axes, and I think it's a good point to just describe what happens in, in full 3D. Define all the angles and find the expression that relates those angles with the angular velocity. So we'll probably do that next time. You can start looking at those if you like. Uh, the other question I have is the first test, there's still time, but we need to decide. As of now, is, is on the 25th, which means that I give it to you at some point during the day, and then you have 24 hours to do it, scan it, return it. Is everybody OK with the 25th? And the reason why I'm asking that is that if there are serious conflicts, I can try to move it around, but it's either earlier, which I don't think you will like, or later, which means we're very close to the spring break. Probably too close. So if you have any issues, any of you, also those who are not here and will watch this lecture, serious issues about that day, uh, please let me know as soon as possible. Otherwise, we'll just stick with that day. Uh, I'll probably give it to you after. I think it's a, it's a class day. So I'll probably give it to you after class, just email it to you, and then you have it uh, 24 hours. OK? All right, so we'll continue this on uh, Wednesday and start seeing other angles.